Hello, this is Watch It All About with another watch review and in this review we're looking at a pretty special watch. This is the Accutron DNA and this is basically the very first watch ever to be powered by an electrostatic uh, movement which is very very exciting. So this watch has basically been uh, released to celebrate Accutron's 60th anniversary. Uh, it was originally released in 1960 which was a tuning fork movement, the Accutron brand obviously a precursor to the Quartz movement, uh, which was released around a decade later. That was the Seiko Astron around the, the early 70s. That tuning fork movement had a good run of about 15 years before Accutron moved on to other things. Fast forward 60 years then to 2020, Accutron have now launched this other first of its kind electrical based movement. So never before has this power source powered a watch movement. So I tried doing a bit of digging about the movement itself but there isn't a huge amount of information so I do want to just do a shout out to the Watch With Us YouTube channel because they did a really good interview with Accutron's managing director Michael Benevente. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below. So you know what I find really exciting about this is that no one really knows how this movement will perform in the long run as you know it's so rare that a new technology is released such as this. So there's loads of unanswered questions and a couple of years down the line, you know, we literally don't know how these will be performing. Hopefully, uh, you know, you, you'd assume that it'll be ticking away nicely, uh, but you just don't know. So let's discuss the watch. You can't help but realise and appreciate this is a watch that demands attention. No doubt about it. It is a statement piece. It's got otherworldly case construction. Obviously, the remarkable mo remarkable movement found within, let alone the size of the thing. 45.1 millimeters in diameter. It's got a height of 15.6 millimeters and a lug to lug length. Obviously they're integrated lugs, but a 52.3 mil from the end of the lug to the end of the lug there. Before we go into it further, it's just worth having a very, very brief history lesson. Uh, Accutron was not an actual brand in itself until this year. It was a range of watches made by Bulova. Bulova got bought out by Citizen in 2018 and therefore it's the new parent brand Citizen pushing the Accutron resurgence with a fresh slate and as its own brand. So why does this watch matter then uh, in modern day? Well, as te technology advances, it's always good, isn't it? To push the boundaries of what's possible and reimagine the past. This is exactly what the new Accutron brand of 2020 is set out to do. So that, they've done that with their new proprietary electrostatic movement. So how does it work? Well, I'm a fully qualified electrician and uh, even for me, it's pretty complex. There is an insane article about this uh, by Jack Forster on Houdinki. Uh, it's really, really interesting. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well if you are really interested. But a simple explanation is, um, first of all, it's good to note the power isn't stored in a mainstream or a battery, but rather a capacitor. These two lower turbines are electrostatic generators, which are really wonderful to watch. I don't know if you can see, but as you tap them and as you move, you can see it converting that sort of energy into uh, electrostatic uh, power. The smallest movement or tap kicks these blades into action. There's also an additional rotor hidden away at the back, like a conventional mechanical automatic movement, uh, which spins around doing the same thing. The electrostatic motor that controls the watch itself is the large turbine at around about 10 o'clock and you can see it spinning there to the same rate as the second hand. A regular motor, so a normal like electric powered motor powered by electricity is dependent on magnets and the way they attract and repel one another. So as it spins, magnets dotted around the outside of the uh, around the case sort of gradually repel and attract which makes it spin. That's not the case with an electrostat electrostatic uh, motor. Instead it works on the attraction and repulsion, repulsion of electric charge. So I found another YouTube video um, which demonstrates how this works in the most simplest way and it's just a case of this guy has created an electrostatic motor with simple household things which is again very very intriguing. I, I, I suggest uh, you give it a watch if you're interested. 
So anyway, uh, on to some other uh, bits of information. How much power reserve does this, mu does this new movement have? Well, it comes fully charged throughout the factory, providing two years of runtime. However, if you wear it daily, just like an automatic movement, it will keep the amount of charge topped up, even increasing it to uh, you know up 10 years and upwards if you're very active. One interesting fact is when the crown is pulled out, no power whatsoever is being used. Unlike with a quartz movement powder by a battery, that battery will degrade over time, will die eventually. This doesn't. It will store that charge and the store... The uh, the stored charge will be fine forevermore. You will literally be able to pull that out 10 years down the line, push it back in, and uh, it will tick away. So there's a, a resting mode to, to save some power. If, it's, um, if there's no activity at all, if you literally put it on the side on your desk or if you put it away in your watch box, after five minutes, the rolling seconds hand will stop at 12. It will obviously carry on ticking away in the background. Um, when activity is detected, so as soon as you pick it up and start wearing it again, the seconds hand will start moving, obviously picking up where the, the second should be. There's a five year warranty on this movement, which is good considering no one in the world outside of Japan, outside of the headquarters, can actually work on these things. Servicing is only to be completed by Accutron's uh, technicians in their lab in Tokyo. So the movement is known as the Caliber NS30-Y8. A, and uh, they state that the accuracy is plus or minus five seconds a month. So it is incredibly accurate, which you would expect. Unbelievably, um, this movement is actually as small as it physically can be for now. Obviously, as technology advances, no doubt it'll be able to get smaller and smaller. But for now, there's no chance of this movement being found within a watch uh, smaller than this, basically. Um, you know, you won't be able to find this in a nice 40 mil dress watch with a really thin uh, thin height. Just going back to the size, 45.1 um, mil diameter, 15.6 mil height, does make it a challenge for me to wear it all day long. I do have uh, a fairly average seven inch wrist. However, I, I doubt very much that this would be actually a daily wearer for many purchasers purchases, but rather a jewel in the collection for special occasions, or even for, for collectors who just like collecting watches with special significance. So I can't imagine too many people will be wearing this all day, every day. Obviously, visually, um, it's all about that movement and the three turbines, but the casework really is sublime. So starting from the top, we have dramatic curved edges of the sapphire crystal. It's a delight to view displaying the exposed movement so well, these variety of bridges too. And then we have this sort of outer inverted rehout with applied hour markers uh, too. I find the PVD coated black alongside the rose gold is a real killer combination. Classy, sumptuously luxurious, while still being a measure of sporty and casual. There's, you know, such a variety of uh, chamfered edges, finishes and elements throughout the case, making it truly a joy to behold. The hooded lugs and the integrated rubber strap may not necessarily be for everyone from a visual sense, but there's no denying that the way it's so seamlessly incorporated between the two is it's really, really impressive. It's literally perfect the way they merge into each other. Moving on to the dial, the pitch Dauphine hour and minute hands are polished, creating eye-catching reflections at a variety of angles. However, against such a detailed backdrop, it does mean that legibility does suffer a little bit. Um, and then this is compounded in the dark due to the rather disappointing strength loom, I'm gonna be off, um, honest. It's a very uh, thin slither of loom in the center of each hand. And then these hour markers all have uh, blocks of loom as well. But the strength of it is a little bit disappointing for a watch costing this much, I'm not gonna lie. It's a shame that they didn't load it up with really, really strong loom, because that would have made it even more impressive. One thing I do like is the uh, the stylish uh, little stick white seconds hand with uh, the cute little Accutron logo acting as the uh, counterweight. It's a nice little touch. So the dial itself features a multitude of brushed bridges, all at different levels, uh, secured by a gamut of screws. Obviously, these are real screws as well. Sometimes, if you go, uh, you know, a cheaper watch. I don't know if you've seen it, but. You can, look at a, you can look at a dial which has fake screws on it. That's not the case here, obviously. One particularly nice touch is the variety of angles of the brushed finish as well. They all seem to go in a different direction, which is really interesting when you look at the case, uh, when you look at the dial close up. And it's all topped off by a beautiful applied logo at three, which I'm a real sucker for. That 
Accutron logo, the tuning fork is, is absolutely delightful. So just flipping it over to the case back, it features a detailed deep stamp turbine uh, with a, a nice, again, deep stamped logo in the center. Really impressive to behold. Obviously inspired by the turbines of the movement itself uh, as uh, displayed on the front of the, the case as well. So very nice, simple, but effective um, case back. The push-pull crown, uh, is, so it's not screwing, it's just uh, merely push-pull. Suitably sized, easy enough to use as well, uh, with an angled linear knurl uh, to aid grip as well. You can see how relatively straightforward and easy it is to use. It has a, a polished rendition of the tuning fork logo, uh, appears on the end of it, and it appears to be under what feels like a clear lacquer or plastic tip. So just moving on to the uh, rubber strap then, it's delightfully soft and comfortable on. It's not, usually I find with rubber straps, they tend to be an absolute dust and fluff magnet, but this one is not. Honestly, uh, I, I've been wearing this quite a lot and there's barely a stitch of fluff on it, which is really, really impressive and really good to have. Despite the, you know, the size of the watch as well, the way that it's integrated into the, uh, the lugs, uh, it ensures that the watch in general is really easy to wear for prolonged period of times. And I do like this subtle, very gentle little peak in the center as well. A really simple but effective uh, piece of design work there in these um, angled edges too. Finally, the butterfly clasp, different enough from all the others out there to make you feel like it's special. Top bar is slightly skeletonized with the text logo and the, uh, the logo mark as well, deeply engraved on the top. Again, rose gold goes so well with the black, really like that. The action of it, of using it is as you'd expect, although it does feel uh, probably a little bit beefier than the regular butterfly clasps I tend to come across. And it's nice to have all the polished kind of finishing uh, inside as well, give you, giving you that uh, luxurious kind of feel to it. All right, so I think that's everything covered. I tell you what, let's get the macro lens on and look at it in even closer detail. Okay, then here we go, the bit you've all been waiting for. Here is the movement in all its glory up close. So you can see here, our main electrostatic motor spinning away uh, at 10. If we move down, here are our little generators as well. So if I give it a little tap, you can see those turbines spinning away. Really interesting to watch. It, it's absolutely delightful. If I give it a good spin, you can see they spin like crazy. And uh, you can see all these different uh, uh, bridges and different heights as well, all at different angles, decent screws too. Acutron logo, nice and neatly applied there. Gentle pitch to it as well, that's polished. You can see they're catching the light so nicely. Look at our hands too. Again, pitched and polished, perfect construction. Just a beautifully detailed dial uh, with so much depth to it. Uh, moving to the outside of the, the dial, we have this inverted rehout, uh, I guess is a nice way to describe it with these applied hour markers. Again, nice and deep. Loom filled, but again, the loom isn't too strong. Uh, and then moving on to the case itself, let's give that a cheeky wipe. You can see here are amazingly uh, finished case with such sharp lines. I mean, look at that, absolutely incredible machining there. A uh, variety of sections to each case uh, as well. Obviously the PVD section and the rose gold sections are different. Uh, but again, really nice to uh, behold, really interesting to look at as well. And you can see the seamlessness where it joins up with the rubber strap as well. Very, very impressively done. Moving on to the crown, you can see here the logo on the end, sort of like a lacquered uh, paint job on the end almost. And then our cheeky little knurled grip. Again, very easy to use, very nice, nicely manufactured as well. Flipping it over to the case back, nice deep stamped logo in the center with our turbine inspired surround. Everything else fairly straightforward, bit of specs, bit of information around the outer edge. And then finally we look at the rubber strap, see that ridge and our angled edges. And finally, just looking at the buckle itself, see there slightly skeletonized, brushed finished with our logo, very nice and deeply engraved on the end there. The polished side buttons, if I just pop it open, see the inside, polished, decent quality, good, well-built butterfly clasp. Okay, 
So then what are my final thoughts on this watch? Well, at a glance, the $3,300 or around about two and a half thousand pounds price tag could be balked at. Uh, however, think of previous firsts in the industry for a similar of a similar ilk. First quartz watch, the Seiko Astron, was priced at 450,000 yen, equivalent then to the cost of a Toyota Corolla. The very first digital watch, the Hamil Hamilton Pulsar P1, cost 2,100. In today's money, that's you know over $10,000. No doubt those watches are worth much more than that now. Firsts do come at a premium, don't they? But they also come with a ready-made legacy that will live on in the history books. So when you think of it, I don't think $3,300 or two and a half thousand pounds isn't actually that bad for the very first electrostatic watch. Who knows, in a couple of decades, quartz might have died a death and this is the new direction that all electrical powered watches are taken. In which case, these firsts, these first, the Accutron uh, range, will be a hugely significant timepiece. Even if that's not true though, I feel that these would still make very good investment pieces. When you look over the whole Accutron range, um, they are all beautiful and striking by design, but it's the technology within that's taken all the headlines, hasn't it? The price is indeed knocking on the door of luxury watches, yes, but, you know, Mechanical watches, they're all old hat now. Who wants a boring old mechanical movement? Of course, um, I'm kidding, of course. Um, but the fact of the matter is, these watches are outstanding, notable timepieces that, in my opinion, are worth every single penny. Absolutely stunning build quality and an amazing step uh, in technology. So this was the Accutron DNA. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and also comment your thoughts below. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.